It was 80 years ago today that a Coast Guard ship left Honolulu, headed for the Pacific, carrying a half a dozen young native Hawaiian men. That would begin a seven year project to colonize tiny Pacific islands strategic to the U.S. Only three of those men are still alive. They and their former co colonists were honored today. The story's all new tonight at 6. Paul Phillips stood on the floor of the House chambers as state lawmakers honored him and 129 other young Hawaii men for helping the United States in its wartime efforts decades ago. The men, most of them native Hawaiian, were dropped off on the tiny islands of Howell, Baker, and Jarvis, 1,800 miles from Hawaii, not really knowing what they were being sent to do. Gordon Pi'inaia was at the house today, too, representing his father, Abe Pi'inaia, who was a member of the original party of six Kamehameha boys who left Honolulu on this day 80 years ago, headed for Baker Island. He was pretty quiet, you know. Uh, he didn't talk about his, uh, his life uh, after Kamehameha too much. The U.S. government's secret plan was for the young men to live on these islands to colonize them so the U.S. could claim jurisdiction of the islands to make sure no other country could. Phillips left Honolulu July 1941, just a month after his high school graduation, following in the footsteps of his brother Woody. He was dropped off at Jarvis Island. It was flat as this floor, a mile and a quarter long, with scrub brush and that's it. Not a tree on the island. A thousands of birds. Phillips says they lived in a building previous colonists had built from wood claimed from a shipwreck. Provisions were dropped off regularly, including 55 gallon drums of fresh water. There's never a lack of food. In fact, boy, boy, in bottles sent down about that. But uh, uh, in addition to the non perishables, of course, the fish, lobster, lobster by the tons. Many of the colonists would later say it was an idyllic life. Panala'au means to colonize, and they called themselves Hui Panala'au. Their daily jobs included taking daily weather reports. Then came December 7, 1941. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, we spent two months without any contact with the outside world. And uh, then we were shelled by a foreign submarine, from deck gun of a foreign submarine. And uh, faced the reality of soon running out of drinking water. Two native Hawaiian colonists died when the Japanese bombed Howland Island. Phillips was in the final group of colonists to leave the islands. That was February 1942. The colonization project was over. Now, two years ago, the Bishop Museum ran an exhibit and produced the video Under a Jarvis Moon. And that was the first time many had ever talked about their time on those islands. Phillips, who's 92 years old, says what saddens him is that the U.S. government has never recognized these young man, men who volunteered to serve their country, those first colonists not even knowing what they're about to do. Last week, Hawaii's congressional delegation introduced resolutions to honor the Hui Panala'au colonist who helped the United States establish its rights in the equatorial Pacific. That is an incredible story, mm -hmm. something I never learned about until today. That they footage were, is amazing, it's too. It's amazing footage, and they were all told when they came back, hush, top secret. And it stayed that way for so long. Mm -hmm. Well, glad to see they're at least getting recognized by the state today. Yeah. Wow.